Okay, so the purpose of this recording is to show you how to use uh, Geometer Sketchpad for your upcoming project. Uh, the expectation for your project is that uh, all of the figures that you draw uh, in your uh, uh, angle or length web uh, are going to be constructed and not drawn. So I'm going to show you a very quick example of what we don't want. Uh, if, for instance, in your angle web you're going to have an isosceles triangle, uh, one of the ways, of course, we know that isosceles triangles have uh, one exactly, or sorry, at least one pair uh, of uh, sides congruent. So I'm, I've drawn a line segment. Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to measure the length of that. Uh, when it measures the length of that, it also labels it for me. Uh, and then what I'm going to do is uh, draw myself uh, another side. Uh, I'm going to measure uh, the length of that side. And then if you uh, get hold of point C and try and manipulate that to get the correct length, then what you're doing, in fact, is drawing and not constructing. Uh, and what's going to happen uh, when you do that is when uh, you submit your file, one of the first things your teacher is going to do is to click on key points, uh, move those points, and see if the, uh, the figure maintains its structural integrity. And so, as you can see here, if I grab point B and move it, I'm able to change this from an isosceles triangle to a scalene triangle. Um, and uh, in that particular, uh, in this instance, uh, this is going to be a failing of your uh, construction and is going to create a problem for you. So what we need to be able to do um, is, so I'm going to take these and delete those. Uh, what we need to be able to do is to construct uh, an isosceles triangle that will remain an isosceles triangle even if the points are manipulated. Okay, so the way to do that is if you double click point B, that is going to mark point B as the center of rotation. I'm then going to select the segment and I'm going to select point A and I'm going to go to the transform menu. And one of the options is to rotate. And I'm going to select rotate and it's going to give me the option in this case to rotate by a fixed angle. And so you can type in any angle you wish. Uh, I might type in, let's say, 80 degrees, and I hit enter, and what it's done is it's rotated segment AB uh, 80 degrees, which guarantees that angle B is 80 degrees, um, and uh, what you can be sure is that segment AB is going to equal the other segment because it's uh, they are the same length. And so first of all, I'm going to go in and label this over here. You'll see anytime you use the transform menu that it gives the label of prime to whatever point has been transformed, translated, rotated, etc. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to go in, double click that and change the label to C in this case. Uh, if you go ahead and you measure that segment, you'll see that it measures the identical length. And so I'm just going to get rid of that label. So I don't want that label there. Um, and so if some reason it's not labeling that as A, B, and B, C, but that's okay. Uh, what we can also see is um, uh, if, uh, if I select this little pen over here and go over to segment A, B, I can click on it. It's going to create an arrow for me, or if you right-click, you have the option of a crossbar, and of course a crossbar is the correct way to mark off congruent segments. Okay, and back to the arrow, and what you're going to see is this is a properly constructed figure because if I click on point A, and move this, it maintains the structural integrity. And what I mean by that is it changes the lengths, but it maintains the equality of the lengths. Uh, what you'll see also is that uh, I'm unable to modify angle B because angle B was created by rotation. And so I can change the lengths, but what I cannot do is change this from an isosceles triangle into a scalene. Uh, and what I also cannot do is modify its angles because I created the angle using a rotation. And so what you can be sure of, of course, is that that angle is 100 degrees. So if I click on A, double click, I can put a label in. And this, of course, will be useful because, as you know, uh, your project has to be solvable. And so we are expecting you to put some labels in so that we can actually do some calculations. And then what we might do, of course, is put in an X. And perhaps one of the things... Um, you might ask someone to solve for is x. Okay, and so if I were to go ahead and solve for x, then in this particular case, since I know this is 100 and this is isosceles, 
I'm going to use ITB, the isosceles triangle biconditional, which says these two angles are congruent. I take 180 minus 100 leaves me with 80, and I can calculate angle A as 40 degrees. And so in your solution um, document or, or uh, solution page, uh, we would expect to see something like this. X is equal to 40 degrees. Let me just increase the size of that. So X is equal to 40 degrees. I'll go down. I'm going to change the color. Uh, and I'm going to say that the reason X is equal to 40 degrees is because of the isosceles triangle by conditional. And so I have now given uh, the answer to this uh, portion of the question uh, and I've also given the reason for the answer. Uh, don't forget as well that you're also required to tag the unit that this comes from and so in parentheses what I'm going to do and once again I'll use a different color uh, and this is uh, the isosceles triangle by conditional came from unit 2. Uh, you of course will have the um, theorem sheet which you can refer to. Now obviously we don't want to give this to uh, somebody else to solve with the answers and so what you're going to do is as you go, you can type the answers up, click on it, and uh, what you can do is, uh, I'll show you how to use from the display menu, you'll have uh, the option to show and hide. Uh, and so uh, one of the ways that you can do that is to click on that from the display menu, uh, uh, sorry, from the edit menu, there is the option for uh, what is known as an action button. You can click hide show, and what it does is it creates this button for you. Uh, let me just get the button over there. And that button will hide your caption and show it. So it'll hide the answer and show it. And what you can do is uh, once you've done all of your answers, you can select all of them, uh, go to the display, uh, sorry, the edit, uh, create an action button uh, that hides all of them simultaneously and that way uh, it'll be nicely set up. So for now what I'm going to do is just get rid of that um, and I'm just going to hide this as well. Okay, so let me just show you a couple more uh, constructions that I think are going to be key. Um, one of the things uh, that you're going to uh, probably uh, want to do is to construct um, uh, either a parallelogram, a rectangle, a kite or a square, any one of those. And so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to use segment BC and I'm going to use that as one of the sides in a parallelogram. Okay, and so I'm going to construct from B uh, into some space. I'll go over there and I'll give the endpoint a name. So that's going to be segment BD. Uh, and of course, uh, to construct a parallelogram, what I need is both pairs of opposite sides parallel. So if I select BD, select point C, and from the construct menu, now uh, parallel line is no longer grayed out because I've selected a segment and uh, a line through which the parallel line, uh, sorry, a point through which the parallel line will pass. I select parallel line and it's going to draw me uh, a line which is parallel to BD. Um, and again, if you try and do this by sight, then the following will not happen. So right now, if I move point D, it moves the parallel line as well, and that means you've constructed it correctly as opposed to tried to draw it by eye. And then the next part of this, of course, is to construct the other parallel side. So I'm going to select BC, select point D, and construct a parallel. Uh, and then what I want is I may not want these extra uh, 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 rays, the pieces of the line that aren't relevant. And so I'm going to go uh, select uh, my segment, uh, join from D to the point of intersection, join from the point of intersection to C, and what you'll see is that it uh, leaves the rest of the line uh, as a dashed line, and then if you hide that, so from the display menu, you'll see there's the option uh, to hide the parallel lines, or in all cases, anything that's selected, if you use Command H, then uh, you will be able to hide the pieces that you don't want. And now, of course, I'm going to go and put my label in. Uh, what I can also do is label this as a parallelogram, so I'm going to click on that side, right click and this time I want an open arrow uh, and I can just turn that around and over here I'm going to click twice uh, and turn that around. Okay and so now I've got parallelogram BDEC uh, and if I click on point A I can manipulate the entire figure 
and no matter what I do with the triangle, it maintains uh, its characteristic as isosceles with a vertex angle of 100, and it maintains my parallelogram uh, that I have uh, B, D, E, C, because I've used the construction menu. Okay, uh, let me just show you a couple more things. So you've, you've, uh, we've gone through the show hide. Um, if you wanted to uh, bisect angle C, for instance, angle B, C, E, uh, you need to select the parts of the angle. So uh, that's one of its sides. That's its vertex. This is its other side. And then from the construct menu, the option for angle bisector uh, will uh, become available. I'll bisect that angle over there. As you can see, it does not pass through the diagonal because that's not a characteristic of a parallelogram. Uh, and then if you wanted uh, just a piece of it, of course, we could go from C to the point of intersection. Uh, we could hide that portion of the uh, angle bisector, provide a label over here. And if you wanted to show that this was an angle bisector, you can, again, use the pencil, go to the angle, and slide into the interior of the angle uh, from the vertex to the interior. And that's how we can show that the two pieces are congruent, that that angle uh, has been bisected. Uh, and of course, you now open up alternate interior angles and all sorts of other options. Okay, hopefully you find uh, this project uh, uh, valuable and uh, it helps you with your review for exams. Good luck.